Upon checking my phone, I saw that I had 13 missed calls, all from my mother-in-law, Martha. Not again, I thought. As I was pondering this, my phone vibrated once more. Hello? I answered the call. Martha immediately raised her voice in anger. Excuse me, isn't the allowance for this month $3,000? Boo. Send the allowance. This month's payment hasn't been deposited yet, she raged, completely disregarding my circumstances and only expressing her own desires. I'd had enough of her. Even in this situation, she doesn't reflect on her words and actions, does she? I've got no choice but to resort to my last option. I pulled myself together and blurted out into the phone, Your son has passed away, so I can no longer send the allowance. My name is Jennifer Smith, 32 years old. I'm a busy working woman at a major financial firm and also a housewife. I got married about two years ago. I met my beloved husband, Mark, through our shared hobbies. He was kind to everyone, and I was attracted to his warm smile, quickly developing feelings for him. Apparently, he felt the same way, and after dating for a year, we immediately got engaged. We both believed that we wouldn't meet anyone better than each other. We were living together while dating, and without any major quarrels, we decided to marry. Everything went smoothly for us, but here's where a problem arose. Martha, my mother-in-law. My father-in-law had passed away a few years ago, and since Mark didn't have any siblings, his only family was Martha. The trouble started when I first visited her home to introduce myself before our wedding. Nice to meet you, I said. Martha clearly showed a displeased expression. So, you're Mark's fiancée? Uh, yes, my name is Jennifer Miller. You're a rather plain girl. I wonder what Mark sees in you. I couldn't tell if she was joking or seriously meant what she said. Having such words directed at me by the mother of my loved one, I was quite shocked. Seeing my state, Mark frowned at Martha. Hey mom, what's with this sudden harsh words? How can you say such things to the person I chose? No, Mark, I'm just trying to choose a suitable woman for you. Choose? I'm the one who chose her. You have no right to meddle. Don't say it in such a cold way. I'm just telling the truth because I care about you. If you really cared about me, you'd simply support us. Why can't you understand such a simple thing? The air turned heavy as an argument unfolded between mother and son right before my eyes. Given that this was my first meeting with Martha, I wasn't in a position to intervene. Although the atmosphere remained awkward, we ultimately managed to express our intent to marry. As we were leaving, Martha called out to Mark, sounding somewhat disgruntled. Mark, can I have a word? You're going to keep that promise after you get married, right? What promise? You know, about the allowance. Oh, that. Yes, I'll be sure to take care of that. Can we not discuss it here, please? Well, I was just asking. Throughout, the atmosphere between my husband and his mother was tense, and the air was thick with discomfort. In the car on the way home, I asked Mark about the thing that had been bothering me. Hey Mark, about the conversation you had with your mom as we were leaving. Yeah, I should have told you about it, Jennifer. I heard something about an allowance. After my dad passed away, I've been sending money to my mom every month. How much? $2,000. What? $2,000? I couldn't help but raise my voice in surprise. He then sighed deeply and began to speak slowly. Actually, my mom has a debt. A debt? She lost a lot of money at a casino a long time ago. She's still paying it off, and because her health isn't great these days, she spends a lot of time at home. But she still needs money to live on. Right? But $2,000? Isn't that a bit too much? If I try to lower the amount, she keeps calling me over and over. No matter what, a mother is still a mother. I worry about her living alone. I see. Mark is really devoted to his mother, but of course that makes sense. Since his father passed away, Martha has been the only family he has left. Regardless of her character, she's still his beloved mother. At that time, I only thought of my husband as a kind person. Two months after our wedding, during my lunch break, one day, I received a phone call on my smartphone. The call was from Martha. When I answered with a hello, Martha began to speak in a cheerful tone. 
Jennifer, long time no see. Can we chat for a bit? Yes, what can I do for you? Well, I was hoping you could start sending me money. Excuse me? I was so taken aback, I couldn't find the words to respond. However, Martha seemed excited to continue the conversation. You mentioned before that you're working for a financial company, right? That means you have a good salary, doesn't it? Well, not exactly. You're lying to avoid giving me money. That's not what I mean. Then what is it? But Martha, you're still receiving financial support from Mark, aren't you? To my question, Martha responded in defiance. So what? Jennifer sternly stated what she felt. Martha, receiving $2,000 in monthly support is a big deal, and yet you're asking for more? Hum, really, you think so? If you were to send me an additional $1,000, I could avoid burdening Mark. What do you mean by that? Well, I have Mark as a guarantor for my debts. If I fail to make payments, the debt collectors will go after him. Do you understand? But aren't you using part of Mark's $2,000 to pay back the debt? I'm short. I haven't told Mark, but I have a significant amount of debt. From Martha's tone, it was apparent that this was a fact even her husband was unaware of. Having children in the future would increase our expenses, and taking over Martha's debt was not an easy task. But if Martha's payments fell behind and the debt fell onto Mark, the interest would likely have accumulated significantly by that time. If I refused to send money, it would eventually become a problem for my husband as well. It was better for Martha to pay off her debt now. Thinking along those lines, I reluctantly agreed to Martha's proposal. All right, I'll start sending you money. Really? Good God, Jennifer, I knew you would say that. The total with Mark's contribution will be $3,000. But this means you can pay off your debt, right? Yes, of course. I should be able to pay it all off in about a year. You promise, right? You'll make sure to pay off all your debts? I get it, so I'll be expecting it from this month onwards. Martha ended the call abruptly. Physical exhaustion from work, combined with this emotional burden, only added to my stress. $1,000 a month, that's going to be rough. But it's also to prevent future problems for us. After all, if Martha can't make a living, it will upset Mark as well. That night, I promptly reported the matter to my husband. He told me I didn't have to do this. But I had already given my word to Martha, and it was a decision made for our future well-being. Mark expressed his gratitude and understanding, even as he maintained a sorry expression throughout. Time flew by, and two years have passed since then. The financial aid we thought would end in a year is still ongoing, and even now, we are transferring $3,000 every month to Martha. What's more, about two months ago, Mark fell ill and has been unable to go to work. He's on sick leave, so he's receiving disability benefits, but it's a mere pittance compared to his previous salary. Last month, I managed to transfer $3,000 to Martha from my savings, but it would be very challenging if this situation continues. Unbelievably, Martha has not once come to visit her sick son. We have told her about his hospitalization, but she doesn't show up to see him and only contacts me to ask. You're still sending the money, right? I was so angry that I decided to confront Mark about the issue. Mark, listen, don't you think it's wrong that Martha is only concerned about money? Even though you're in such a state, we need to think seriously about what to do going forward. Yeah, I've been thinking the same thing. I don't want to put more strain on you, Jennifer. This month, too, she's been bombarding me with calls and messages asking if we've sent the money yet. Are you serious? How can she only think about money when her own son is sick? Mark showed his anger at his mother, his face slightly worn. Then, as if he had an idea, Mark exclaimed, That's it, and wore a sly grin. What is it, Mark? Well, this is our last resort. I've come up with something something good. For your mom? What? What Mark suggested was a plan I could never have imagined. Although it could be called inappropriate, it seemed to be the only way to make Martha understand. A few weeks later, Mark was discharged from the hospital. Martha didn't reply to any of our messages, so we didn't tell her about Mark's discharge. In the last two weeks, Martha has been relentlessly demanding the money. 
There's no point in sending money to a mother who doesn't even worry about her son. While Mark and I were enjoying a cup of tea, a message came in on my phone. Upon checking, I found 13 missed calls from Martha again. As I thought, my phone vibrated again. It was another call from Martha. Hello, I answered, turning on the speaker so Mark could hear. Martha started shouting right away. Listen, where's the $3,000 for this month? Excuse me? That's right, the money. The money for this month hasn't been transferred yet. Martha, do you realize Mark is? I don't care if he's in the hospital or whatever. It's none of my business. You're working at a good place, right? You must have plenty of savings. Hurry up and transfer it here, Martha shouted angrily. Then she said something unbelievable. Listen, since you married Mark, if he can't pay, you have to pay me. Understand? If you refuse, I'll make you the guarantor. Got it? At that moment, something inside me snapped. She was displaying her greed openly, without considering our situation at all. I had reached my breaking point with her. She didn't even try to reflect on her own actions. Now, I had no choice but to resort to the last option. I firmly declared into my phone, Mark has passed away. I can't send you any more money. At these words, Martha blurted out a baffled, what? Yes, this was the last resort that my husband suggested lie to Martha about Mark's death and observe her reaction. If she showed any sign of sadness, if she reflected on her behavior and apologized, we would continue to support her financially. But if she didn't reflect, if she demanded money, we would sever ties completely. Deep down, I thought that even a money-grubbing woman like Martha would deeply reflect on her actions if she were told that her own son had died. But the very next moment, Martha burst into loud laughter. Yay, what's so funny? I asked. Well, isn't it obvious? If Mark is dead, that means his inheritance will be distributed to me too. Excuse me? I've been looking into it since I heard that Mark was sick. Listen here, two-thirds of Mark's assets are yours, but one-third is mine. I was at a loss for words. I never thought that when she first heard her son was sick, she wouldn't look into treatment, but into how the inheritance would be divided. My anger surpassed shock. I was simply dumbfounded. My husband seemed to feel the same way, and as our eyes met, he slowly nodded. This was the signal to continue with the plan. I once again said to Martha in a strong tone, Martha, did you hear what I said? Mark is dead. I heard. What about it? Aren't you sad your own son passed away before you? You just make sure to send me some money. I won't let you get away with not doing it. With a click, the phone line was cut off and a dial tone echoed. I glanced at my husband and saw that he was shaking, his face red with anger. Mark, are you okay? I asked. He looked into my eyes and said, I'm cutting ties with her. She'll likely come here eventually, demanding money. Let's wait until then. Okay, but are you really okay with this? Cutting off ties just like that. Yeah, I have no regrets. After that call, she's no mother to me. My husband's eyes were filled with hatred, and I felt the same way. A person who only thinks about money over her own son's life is not family to me. A few days later, as we expected, Martha came to our house. For the time being, I decided to hide my husband in the next room and deal with Martha myself. She approached me with a face like a demon. Hey, give me Mark's inheritance right now. Again with that, anything else to say? He's already dead, isn't he? It's pointless to say anything now. Yet you never even visited him. What are you saying? Are you really his mother? You're so annoying. Give me the inheritance right away. I don't mind getting a lawyer. Speaking more would be a waste of time. Just as I thought that, my husband emerged from the next room. Seeing him, Martha let out a startled gasp as if she had seen a ghost. Mark, why weren't you dead? Long time no see, Mom. Sorry, but the news about my death was a lie. A lie? How could you be so disrespectful? I wanted to confirm your true nature, Mom. I was curious about how you'd handle the allowance if I, your son, died. But you turned out to be a gold digger, just as I suspected. I got that perfectly. What? How dare you call your mother a gold digger? Silence. 
I'm cutting ties with a toxic parent like you. Martha's mouth was agape at my husband's angry shouts. She could not come to terms with the fact that her own son was severing ties with her. What does this mean, Mark? It means exactly what I said. I can't consider someone like you as my mother. No way. Then what about the allowance? Do you really think I would? You're on your own with the debts. We're moving. Wait, please. If you do that, what about my living expenses? Tearfully pleading, Martha reached out to my husband. He forcefully shook off her hand, looked at her coldly, and said, I don't care about your living expenses. You have been living off us without even a single apology. I really understand your despicable nature now. Don't you dare show up in front of us again. No, wait, Mark, are you going to abandon your mother? Ignoring her words, my husband grabbed Martha's arm and dragged her to the front door. He threw her shoes and bag outside and chased Martha out of the house. Martha was making a fuss outside for a while but disappeared after a bit, perhaps unable to withstand the eyes of the neighbors. She tried contacting us multiple times, but we ignored all of her attempts. We set Martha's number to be automatically rejected, and we finished moving. Regarding the matter of co-signing for the debts, it became invalid since Martha had made Mark the co-signer without his consent, and therefore he was not responsible. Without the allowance from us, Martha seems to be leading a miserable life. It's only natural, as she had been using the allowance for her gambling habits instead of paying off her debts. She still has a mountain of debts and is chased by debt collectors every day. She can't gamble anymore and seems to be working from dawn to dusk for the foreseeable future. It's unlikely that she will be able to pay off her debts completely. She will have to keep working until she is unable to move. This is entirely her own doing. As for us, we are spending fulfilling days in our new home. My husband's condition has stabilized and he has returned to work after some time. Now, there's a new life growing in my belly. We're going to have an additional member in our family next year. From now on, we want to spend happy days as a family of three.